so happy you could join me today. This is rather a personal request from somebody who said they wanted to see my life in pictures. Here's my attempt at it. Um, just know ahead of time that I'm going to have some uh, photographs that have um, blurred out faces here and there because of certain people's requests or because I couldn't get a hold of them or whatever the reason. Um, so, let's begin with I am born. I am born to my mother, Shirley. My name is Rebecca Lee and I am just a toddler here. I was born in... L.A. County. I can't tell you exact locations. There, some of these things are uh, to preserve uh, the privacy of myself. So there is going to be now and then a, a little fudge of facts, you know, because uh, but I'll get as close to the personal truth as possible. This is my dad and mom and the whole family sitting together in front of a church in L.A. County. Um, I remember, this is me, I was sort of a, a, a daddy's girl to the best of um, my mother's knowledge. I don't remember too well about that, but we loved to run around this brick little edis edifice <laughs> in front of the church. Good memories. Good memories. Okay, so this is my family once again. We are in front of my house. My dad had this house built and he helped build it as well. This is me right here and our first, maybe our second cat. His name is Percy, her brother. David, Sister Linda, Sister Christine, Mom, and my brother, who wishes to remain anonymous. Oh, my dad's name is Kenneth. So, let's see. This is 1969, so I'm in school. I'm eight years old. We are still living in L.A. Uh, this is where my dad has moved us um, out. So we're back to... Let's see. I'm getting a little mixed up here. This one. No, no. Both of those pictures are back in... Um, my dad moved us out to, and we met these beautiful people in um, Malibu Hills, a little little town. I can tell you that uh, called Montanito. It's not even a town; it's a suburb of Calabasas, but it was near the beach, and so it was right between L.A. and. Malibu. So, good neighbor friends. That's me and my brother. Um, I went and joined Brownies. And these were two good childhood friends. So, while we were living out there, we had many opportunities for wilderness and um, so we would collect pollywogs and watch them turn to frogs and but we also somehow hatched uh, butterflies out of cocoons and my brother did that my brother David oops I'm covering up the picture you can see the shadow <laughs> cute okay this is a huge stack I hope it doesn't take really really long um, my father 
used to take us camping quite a bit, so there I am getting my fishing rod uh, ready. No clue how old I am. I'm not going to be able to inform you on all the details, but my dad bought us a big Volkswagen bus because we were such a large family. Okay. Now this is uh, further into the past. Uh, I couldn't find a, a, a timeline appropriate situation for this, but this was my grandfather. He was like so kind, so wonderful, and I was very sad when he passed away. I was 11 years old. We lived in that rural, uh, very rural country area in California. Uh, so we were able to have horses. This uh, horse in particular is not the one that we owned. Um, it was my neighbor's, but when we took out their horses, we would ride their horses. When we took out our horses, we would ride our horses, I, if I recall correctly. But that's me sitting on a horse named Misty. Misty was the name of that horse. My neighbor's. Our first dog, our first and only family dog. Um, and his name was Lucky. There's our horse in the background. These pictures aren't the greatest. Um, a lot of them I, uh, I had to scan and make copies of. I don't know where the originals are. This is me. You can't see my head because I am in the middle of what you call a back chest roll. It's like a somersault where you do it backwards. <laughs> You're inverted. And uh, so yeah, I could do gymnastics really well. Um, even though I was of larger stature. Um, so yeah, contortionist. It was fun. And because I was so into gymnastics, I did something dangerous. Uh, we started doing uh, flips and front walkovers uh, in downhill. We were on a uh, hillside and I broke my leg. I was so happy to have my eldest brother's uh, friend who heard me screaming come running and picked me up in his arms. I'm this big. I think I'm 13, 14. And he just picked me up in his arms and took me home. <laughs> That's our living room. You can see the uh, influence I had with the golden colors of the 1960s. Even though I don't decorate that way. Those colors uh, are in my past. Was that the 60s? Let's see, by the time I was four, 13, 14, I don't know, all the way into the 70s. Okay, I had to show this picture of my father. It's at Christmas time. And he just, I mean, he was a very strong disciplinarian and not always kind. Um, that's putting it mildly, but I do not want to put anything negative in anybody's mind about my wonderful father, even though he was difficult. At Christmas time, he became Santa Claus, and I'm not kidding. He just lavished us with just the most beautiful things. And he always got down on either hands and knees or cross-legged like this to put stuff together. And in this case, it's my mom's um, mixer. He got her a mixer. But that was my father. And uh, they always, my parents send us to summer camp every year. Uh, sometimes even uh, winter camp. But this is summer camp in particular. And I am in the game room playing pool. Uh, in our family, we had a pool table in the middle of the living room. So, 
I was uh, pretty good at it. And so I kind of got to sh show off a little bit, do a little bit of shining. <laughs> Didn't ever bet or anything, you know. <laughs> okay. This is a picture of me and um, I don't even recall her name, but I would never be able to get a hold of her to ask her, can you let me put your picture? But we were uh, standing in front of the bus, getting ready to go to summer camp. I think I'm getting to be about 14, 15. I think I'm about 15 here. Growing up a little bit, and I had to put this picture in here just to show you. I definitely loved using the telephone. And this is just proof that rotary phones were part of my life for many years. Okay, and this is when I had my first child. Uh, I'm skipping a part because I don't want to get into detail about how I was married and what happened there. It was a shotgun wedding, if you will. And uh, I don't want to go into great personal detail about the situation, but yes, I can say honestly and without shame that I was pregnant before I got married, but I was married when she was born and I was 19. I feel like I look 15. <laughs> it just uh, took me the longest time to lose the baby fat. So that was my firstborn in my arms, and this is also my firstborn, Catherine. Everybody always said she looked like the Gerber baby. <laughs> and here now, I'm jumping ahead to... Uh, now I have three babies. This is my mother. Uh, holding my youngest son, Jacob. There's my firstborn, Catherine, and my middleborn, Abigail. And this is a cousin of theirs named Melissa. We were uh, out front of my mom's house. At the time that I was having my babies, I lived in Central California. We had moved away from um, uh, Thousand Oaks and and um, Montanito, Calabasas. I and because uh, once I got married, we moved to oh gosh, first Oregon, and then we went to uh, then we came back to Thousand Oaks. I can't even, I cannot track it, and it's really hard for me to remember because we moved so many times. My Jacob, Abigail, Catherine, we were pretty poor back then, so we were covering our ratty couches with <laughs> bed spreads. <laughs> but we, as, uh, as, uh, my children and I were happy together, but we had some difficulty with their father. And this is me uh, throwing my daughter Abigail up into the air. My son, I think at this point we are living in Ronert Park. Ronert Park. That's still considered Southern California, I think. But I uh, had to take a picture of my son peeking through the curtains like that. He wound himself up in it. He was actually having fun, but he looked a bit sad there, and I just thought it was so beautiful. Ronald Park. At some point, my 
husband had moved us to Turlock and we were living actually I had left my husband for a little while after Ronard Park and I ended up going back to him and that is when we moved to Turlock um, but it, this is years later and look we still have that bedspread <laughs> so funny that is so funny I held on to everything and I think I still do but I don't have that anymore. <laughs> and my dad. Um, so we were living in Turlock, and I think I was extremely lonely, and um, my marriage was, let's just say the word is, I was frightened a lot. I was very, very frightened and lonely. And so when my folks came to visit us at Christmas time in Turlock, I was so happy. And this picture is also indicative of something that I remember about my dad, and that was that every year we got him chocolate-covered uh, chocolate cherries. And of course, he just looks delightfully uh, happy about it. And he's got his hand on his stomach like, oh, yeah, I need that. <laughs> And here is a picture of that same Christmas uh, with my mom holding Catherine. And there's Abigail. And I am taking a picture of Jacob and Catherine and my mom. Abigail's looking on. She's going, Ooh, how interesting. What are y'all doing? I was so happy that they had come to see me. And here, um, my brother David. And he's holding Abigail and Catherine. They're all feeding the horse that lives in the yard across the street in Turlock. Okay. Um, apparently, I got to visit my mom. And we had uh, Halloween there and I was scrounging up some outfits and I made Catherine a fairy outfit. Jacob was a convict. <laughs> we even had a little styrofoam ball and chain that was on his ankle. And then Abigail, we dressed up as an old lady because we found a wig and my mom got a <laughs> their little cherub cheeks, uh, but they were all so beautiful and so excited. Um, yeah, I was, um, it was difficult times for me, but we always, always did stuff. Okay, so, this is, oh, well, see, here's the thing. Um, there are a couple people in the world that are privy to the personal information, but it was shortly after this point that I um, was actually physically uh, rescued from my marriage. Uh, that's how under um, depression and opp oppression that I was that somebody had to come and get me. And it was quite a miraculous uh, situation. So, um, a family member came and, two family members came and grabbed me up from Turlock and brought me up to Montana. And here we are in Montana. Uh, I can't go into any details, uh, and I'm not naming names. But my first marriage lasted for seven years, and it was extremely, extremely difficult and rocky and frightening. Um, so that I felt like when I was in Montana, we were in heaven, and we were so happy. I was the happiest, it's the happiest time in my life living in Montana. We were in Butte, Butte, Montana. And so we just started having fun. 
Uh, we had, we had so much fun. We were, um, and, and this, what this picture represents is that, um, finding out then that I was beautiful and that I was fun and I was not ugly and useless and whatever else feelings that uh, I was meant to feel in my marriage was lifted from me and joy like I've never had and we just started doing so many fun things and you can tell by the faces of my children that we were happy happy once again and this is um, we actually even got a portrait station and won a prize and he was the one who <laughs> asked me the question and then uh, we started when I went in to collect the prize he saw me and went ooh <laughs> we started dating right away and um, but soon things went awry and I left uh, Butte Montana eventually I was only there for about six months but while I was there my brother came to see me I went to a, a, a fairly well-known restaurant that served the most amazing giant cinnamon rolls. <laughs> but he was, he was a great comfort to me when I was up there because I was kind of alone. I had another brother up there, but he ended up moving to California, and so I ended up moving up to California. I didn't want to be alone, so here we are back in... Uh, Thousand Oaks because my folks were still living there and my mom let me move home for a very short time and while we were there we were uh, visiting m my mom's mom, my grandmother and she was in her 90s and was not doing well so we're in the hospital visiting where my two girls are very curious my little one was going uh -huh. Oh, I don't know. He, he felt a little bit afraid of her. This is in here just because I love, I love how beautiful and cute my two girls were. Uh, I was not even with them. They were uh, visiting with their father who uh, was in California as well. So, I mean, his parents, we met in Thousand Oaks. Uh, my first husband and I. Yeah. So his folks were still in Thousand Oaks. Uh, this is, um, I am right here. I am in the wedding of my brother and his wife, Jane. This is my sister and boyfriend, Chris. Melissa, Cousin Melissa, Jacob, Abigail, Grandma, Mom and Dad. That was one of the events in my life. And throughout this time, uh, I am not a worker. I have, I dropped out of college and I, uh, well, when I was 16, when I was 16, uh, I worked at Kmart. And I got my first car, which was a Honda. No, I first drove a Ford Falcon, and I started to save and got a Honda. Yeah. Okay, so me at my birthday party. That's a, sort of an event. Uh, so my my brother and his wife Jane, sister Christine, my kids, her kids. That was my birthday. That was nice. 
That's nice. I think I'm about 27 by now. Um, my brother lighting my cake. Um, I, I was dating um, a very wonderful guy named Don. I had met him at church. Um, the reason why he's sitting and I'm standing is because he was a quadriplegic. Uh, I don't want to say he is or was a. He was definitely wheelchair bound. Um, we had a wonderful year and a half together. Or was it a year? Not quite sure how long we dated. Um, my kids loved him. And here's another uh, picture of the two of us together. We were engaged to be married and something happened. Uh, it's of a personal nature that I cannot disclose. He is a wonderful, wonderful human being and my um, fears uh, uh, entered in and I could not get married to him at the time. Nothing to do with his um, wheelchair uh, per se. It was just um, me. I wasn't healed up yet. So, let's see. This is one of the days that we are at my mom's house and the kids are all gathered around and my mom was just actually quite uh, generous and playful with the grandkids when, at this time, uh, while she was most healthy, and they loved her mostly then. <laughs> uh, this is me. And by now, I am uh, moved into uh, my own house with my sister. We moved in together, and I had to get on welfare because there was no way I could make enough money to take care of my three children. Uh, so, uh, Christine, my sister, worked and I took care of her kids, so I was pretty much mom to five children for a while. Uh, but we had so much fun. We had so much fun together. We were still just, you know, it was new to me to not be worried. And here we are. Uh, let's see, Abigail and Jacob, Aaron, Melissa, and no, that's Catherine. Wow, they look so similar here. Catherine, Abigail, Jacob, my two, my sister's two children, Melissa and Aaron. So we're up in um, they're up in the loft of an RV. Yeah, as so they they were having fun. We just, we just had so much fun. Um, so we were in that rental, and I believe that's where we are here too. My mom had given me her couch, and I'm just uh, brushing Abigail's hair, getting ready to go somewhere eventually, because I'm dressed. All right, and while we were living in uh, Moore Park, my sister got married to Chris. I was still dating Don at the time. So here's most of our family gathered here. Uh, this is just basically to represent to you how much fun I was having. <laughs> My sister ended up uh, moving out or something she was living in these apartments and they had this pool so me and my sister both my sisters are sun worshippers we just that's that's it swimming pools beaches that we lived so close to uh, well having been raised in near Malibu um, 
tan, getting a tan was a big deal. That's what you do. <laughs> and a mark of beauty, which I don't agree with anymore. I mean, it's nice in some ways, but so there we are at the beach. And we would go down to, let's see, Malibu Beach, and there would be Zuma Beach and Sycamore. There were so many different wonderful sandy beaches in Southern California. You, you can see that there are no crowds. It's not like that. Not like it is in many places. So this is, um, I met, now you guys have been, if you're familiar with my videos, you have met or heard of Brianna and Avery that are living with us. It's because of this man, Bob, that I, Bob Nelson, I can say his full name because uh, it was Nelson's Country Store. It was he and I who did this uh, gift shop together. But we met through church. Um, we weren't going to the same one, but we kept running into each other. And he was a salesman, so he had a garage sale. He had a garage sale and put me on the mailing list and liked what he saw with me and my children. I was in sweatpants <laughs> marching around with my little ducks in a row behind me and he just loved that and he loved me and getting married to Bob Nelson was near the happiest day of my life. <laughs> um, I loved him and so um my folks, oh gosh, they were so happy after her, everything they had been through with my first marriage. They were like, this is a good guy. This is a good guy. The children were all in the wedding, but I have not pictured them because I want to save time. Uh, how can you not put a picture of kissing? Kissing is so cute. Uh, we were very excited and happy. Uh, Let's see, and this is my folks. They were there at this wedding for sure. And uh, they don't look happy, but they are. <laughs> I don't even know if I look happy there. That was a bad picture, actually, but that was the one that they got of us together. Okay, so that was Thousand Oaks. We're still in Thousand Oaks. And, um,. Trying to keep things brief. I only have one picture of this, but we went to Hawaii for our honeymoon. And that's me in the middle of these giant woods. It was just an incredible place. We have Hawaii, a main island. Uh, mainly we went to Kauai. Kauai was the place that we went. So after our honeymoon, then, I mean, shortly after, it's Halloween again. I've got these guys all dressed up and I think Abigail was Dorothy Jacob's a vampire, Catherine's a princess again, or a queen, and uh, Brianna is a Hawaiian dancer. That's me in the background. Okay, so this is slightly out of order because I have another picture of me wearing that hat. That was after a trip we took. I'm not dressed up. I never dress up for Halloween. Uh, only when I was a kid. Okay, this is representative of how many birthdays we had. Four children together. So it was just like uh, four birthdays a year. <laughs> so... One of the kids, we had Silly String, one of the kids attacked me. I think all of the kids actually attacked me with the Silly String, so I was covered. And Jacob was, well, no bet it was Jacob's birthday. But I am, I moved in with a Bob. And at this point, um, in our, our marriage early on, he had a foreign exchange student come and stay. His name was Kazuo, and I don't know if I'll ever see him again or if he's back 
you know, where he, I can't remember anything about it. I just know he was so much fun. And that's me sitting at the table teasing him. That was fun. As a family, we had lots of fun together. We did things, lots of things. Um, that's me in a dress for crying out loud, hiking. And Catherine, she's also in a dress and we're just like, nobody can keep us down. We have to hike. We have to be out in the outdoors. Another birthday party. Birthday party after birthday party. There's Brianna, Catherine. Those two actually got pretty close. They were the same age. Um, born only a few months apart. Okay, so... Here we are in the house, his house, now our house, um, cooking. We're all cooking together, and that's sweet. Brianna, I'm wearing the same outfit. I wonder if it was the same day as Halloween. I don't know. This is one photo to represent all three of my children who got baptized in that year. Um, or maybe it was the next year. I don't remember how long we were married. I think it was about a year and a half, maybe before we moved to Butte, Montana. But anyway, all three of my children got baptized in this pool with this particular church, and I have blurred the faces because I could not get a hold of them to ask them if they minded. So here uh, is a picture of me roller skating out front of that house. It just, you couldn't keep me down. I loved physical activity, and I loved having fun. So, I still have my crazy perm in my hair. <laughs> Just took a long time to go away. Um, and I had gotten the perm in Montana, I believe. So here are, it's a Christmas in Thousand Oaks. One of the first, I can't get the timeline straight, but I used to go home for Christmas every year if I could. Uh, so this is uh, my sister Christine, sister Linda, mom. Shirley and me at her house for Christmas. My beloved. This is me or up at a sycamore tree at a sycamore beach that looks like Abigail. I believe. So climbing trees. I just an endless child myself. I miss I was only about 28. Here. Okay, and here we are in, oh gosh, that's something else that we used to do a lot too. Um, my husband spoiled us rotten, um, took us traveling. We went, we did so much traveling. Uh, so here we are in Nevada. And the wind is blowing our hair straight out this way. <laughs> it was desert, desert, desert. All right, this is one of the trips that during, mm, I think my husband took me back east, probably three or four four different times, but this is one of those trips that we took. He was a salesman, so he, um, for, for hospital gift shops in particular, and so we got to meet his relatives, and that's his brother, Harry. So Bob, me, Harry, Gloria, oh, his name was Bob too, I believe. It's obviously fall back east, which was magical. Oh my gosh. Incredible. Which is what gave me my first, uh, well, yes, my first actual taste of 
purple foliage like I had never seen it before because it wasn't like that in Southern California. So here we are, I think we're on the, the college grounds of the Boston University and the uh, squirrels are quite tame, so I'm feeding the animals. I was still, nevertheless, and still am a bit of, a bit of, not really great, but I'm an animal whisperer, they call it. They, those terms didn't used to be used. Whisperer was not the term, but I was good with animals. And boy, was I thin. <laughs> that was nice. So at some point before we leave, um, Thousand Oaks to move to Butte, we all got to go to the beach as a family. Or maybe we had already moved to Butte and we were coming back to visit again, but never forget the day that for the first time ever, my dad took my hand and walked with me. Uh, I don't recall ever having my dad do that. Ever. Maybe as a very small, small child, but I don't recall it. He had too many cares and worries and had been abused as a child himself. So it was very difficult for him to be a sensitive father, but he was growing older at this point and became so much kinder. And I cried. I cried that day and I cry almost every time I see this photograph. It's like, yes, my dad did love me. <laughs> he was an engineer for Hughes Aircraft Company. Uh, he put himself through college while raising five children. <laughs> I don't know how he did it, or my mom, but they did. And they stayed married until he died. Okay, so I was still out having a good time. This is me on a motorcycle. Um, my sister and I, and my sister lived in Quincy, California. That was Northern California. I'd never really experienced that area before until she, uh, you know, introduced it, uh, me to it, and she took me on some dirt trails. So we did dirt bike riding uh, a few times, and it was, like, so fun. I started to learn how to do, you know, jumps and stuff like that. It was, mm. So this is, again, me visiting my sister up in Quincy, California, and we had both at the same time, lost weight. <laughs> so we were comparing uh, flat bellies and, you know, narrow hips. <laughs> we were going, hmm, who's, who is thinner? <laughs> we had so much fun. Um, vanity, vanity, the officer just <laughs> so vain. Okay, so here we are. Uh, we finally got to move to Butte, Montana. And this is looking out the picture windows out on the most gorgeous uh, forest of Aspen. And here it's winter, and that was when we finally got up there to see it. Uh, and my husband, uh, Bob, was just smitten. And I mean, I had already knew, known that I loved Butte. Very good memories, you know. And the association that I had with Butte was so positive that I, I took him back and I said, you gotta see Butte, Montana. And we ended up buying 33 acres. This needed a lot of work, the house. I mean, it wasn't a dump, but it was still quite old-fashioned. This is my niece, Michael standing with me at the window looking out in awe. <laughs> so, uh, here's a picture of a mose on that same property. I believe it was that property. 
maybe this was a different property. Well, anyway, this still very much represents the aspen groves and the wildlife that uh, one of the things that impressed the heck out of me about Montana and Butte in particular was how many wildlife, everything, moose, elk, deer, mountain lion, pheasants, there were so many wild animals that made it extremely exciting to live in Montana. Here's me. I had to stare at this picture for a long time to try to decide if it was me or Abigail uh, on the property looking down the hill at 33 acres of just aspen that grows all along the creek. I don't think I have any springtime pictures like this to give the effect, but it was gorgeous. I mean, back then you could get 33 acres uh, and a house and a huge metal barn. I mean, there was so much for only $125,000. So that was quite a, quite a time. Just another view of that acreage. And that's looking up the hill. So very dramatic. Okay, so we have um, me uh, fixing up the. Let's see, I'll, I'll show you this picture first. We had these really incredible um, old, old uh, weather worn uh, barns on that property in Butte. And so I'm helping repair the roof so that we can start raising chickens. And so we did. We started raising chickens. We bought a bunch, a bunch of chickens. And by this time, we are involved greatly with our church. And they came as a home group to help us slaughter and dress the chickens and put them in bags and get them frozen. This is me holding that's my face right there, but that's my uh, sister-in-law, Jane. And they were living there at the time, too, and then a neighbor friend. No, she's not a neighbor. She was a good woman from the church that came out. We had the, a whole group of people come out and help us. Uh, Montana was still pretty wild uh, in spite of you know how tame it is in general and civil by the time that we're living there, which was 19... Oh, 92 maybe. But we met this neighbor. You can see this, he's got a cigarette hanging out of his mouth and an old hat. He was a pig farmer and he carried his gun everywhere he went. What a character. What a character, but he actually joined in with our church group, though he had no um, sense of religion in his life. He just uh, became friends with Bob, and he helped us with his chickens, and we gave him some chickens, and he gave us some pork. <laughs> it was a really nice uh, mutual helping relationship and friendship. Uh, this is just a representative of me and Brianna um, getting along very well in the wilderness. We have uh, just a constant um, good times as a family going camping, swimming. We just did so much together. This is on that same property. We, um, we had all that acreage, so we boarded the horses, uh, the horse of a friend of ours. She didn't have a place to keep it, so we... Okay, this is in Yellowstone. Uh, four kids and me at Mammoth Hot Springs. Which, of course, you know, was close and accessible. We, we would 
cut down our own trees for Christmas. It's a Christmas time in Butte, not too far away from where we were living. We went backpacking. Uh, my husband forgot the poles, so we had to jerry-rig this <laughs> just some trees. But we had so much fun, we went up 10,000 feet elevation. That's me cooking our breakfast over the stove. We were backpacks. We didn't do anything fancy, just hiked up, hiked and hiked. We ended up hiking in the snow. Okay, while well, we were living at Butte, in Butte, um, at their property, we got a dog. Uh, my husband kept trying to get me to get a dog, and I was just like, I do not want a dog, I do not want a dog. He finally talked me into it, and we got Sugar Bear. And then she had pups, and we were going, oh no, no dear, we live in the country, how do we get rid of these? And so, um, uh, my husband signed up for... Uh, to have the weather channel come out, they would go, the weather channel would go out to different properties, various properties, and report on the weather, and they came out to our property to uh, announce the weather from, <laughs> and uh, so amazingly, that announcer uh, said, hey, and look at these cute little pups, and I think me and my husband were actually on the news then were during the weather and they announced that we had puppies if anybody wanted some and whew, they went right out the door so that's good memories good times okay later on at some point we um we're out on a hike of course but we have um taken on a foster child and his name. They named him, his name, real name was Chopin, Chopin, but uh, his American name was Sherlock, and I don't know why they named him that, but we had him for a little while. Okay, our, um, when we first moved to Butte, uh, Brianna had brought her cat named Cappuccino with us, but it was used to city life and immediately was consumed by coyotes, so we got her a new cat. She named him Shere Khan, and Shere Khan was her cat. He was so precious. Here we are in one of our mountain trips, and we're feeding the deer deer were so tame that they came right up to us and let them let us feed them. Okay, while we were in Butte, Montana, we tried our hands at opening up a gift shop and this was actually very crude and minimalistic because we didn't have the building or the funds to do what we wanted to do, but we found an inexpensive place to just throw some samples of my husband. He was a salesman, as I said, um, so we'd get stuff in, and we had bought this piece of furniture particularly, and was in my other country store later on, but it gave me the bug, and I was just like, oh gosh. So ever since we had that store open for a little while before we moved, uh, I daydreamed over and over again of having another store which is why we ended up having another one later. But my first start was in Butte, Montana. And it worked. I mean, it was okay. Okay, here we are doing our family thing. We're actually walking the railroad tracks. Um, and in near Butte, the, the tracks and the hills were just way up above the highway. But here we are just on the hillside eating on our hike. This is a, a little family reunion down in the basement of my brother's house. Um, there's my dad in the middle, surrounded by all of his grandchildren at the time. He had a lot 
of children, therefore he had a lot of grandchildren. Towards the end of our time in Butte, or during the whole time that we lived there, actually, we were there for five years, we made some really good friends, and we were inseparable, the Wilsons and the Nelsons, and uh, their sugar bear, but um, I won't name their names because I've given you their last name, and I'd like to protect their privacy. We all used to hang out together so much, playing cards and doing stuff together, um, that we all put on a pretty good amount of weight, <laughs> except for Mr. Wilson. Um, so my friend, she says, why are you going to show a fat picture? I was like, well, it's the only one I've got that really represents how much fun we had together. We were like, I love Lucy and, you know, the Mertzes and the, it, it, it was just a wonderful time, but I needed to get back to California. I had had enough of Montana. So we moved. And that was some of our last time together there. And here we are in our new house in Paradise, California. And uh, we had a swimming pool. It was a rental. Because that's all we could do just at first was, was rent. And uh, so those are my kids. They've gotten to be this old and grown up now. So here we are in our backyard. My mom, by this time my father has passed away. He had um, cancer and he died um, while, I, while I lived in Butte. And I don't have any pictures to represent that and I didn't want to talk about such a gloomy thing. But my mother has since remarried. She's married to John kids are getting ready to go to school. We got them a Honda and they all drove together. A little town of paradise. Um, it has now since burned down to the ground and many people died in that fire. I don't know if any of you heard about the tragic uh, sweeping away of that town by fire and I was about four years ago, I guess. This is Brianna and Catherine in front of that house in Paradise. While we were there, we built gingerbread houses. The four of us did. Actually, uh, it, my sister's kids also came over and we each built our own gingerbread house. They weren't uh, authentic gingerbread. We used graham crackers and stuck them together with icing, but everybody made a beautiful creation of their own. We did stuff like that every year. We did a craft. And so when we moved to Paradise, there were just gorgeous rivers uh, and hills and places to swim, swimming holes that we went to. Uh, and that's me sitting on a rock we would dive off of the rocks. We had so much fun. Uh, we took a trip to Nevada again, and I just found this gorgeous field of flowers and just sat right down in it. I loved, loved just being, having my nose in the dirt, <laughs> so to speak, because where I grew up, I mean, I just had a fantasy childhood. So my, t my boy, Jacob. He's a sophomore in high school and he got into this drawing contest and he won, uh, was it first prize? Well, he made it into a calendar and so his picture was in a calendar. He drew this. I was so proud of him. He is an artist. Okay, so we move to a different house within the town of Paradise and we were actually able to buy this particular house and it was very country-like. Um, 
So my daughter Catherine, me, and my sister Christine and her daughter Melissa, we are getting Thanksgiving dinner ready. And um, um, my husband captured the cramped quarters. <laughs> we had, um, was it only one bathroom and a huge house? It was a huge house, but I think there was... Anyway, all four of us girls are in there at the same time getting ready to go somewhere. And we were, while we were in paradise, we did a lot of hiking. Um, this is my sister Linda, me, Brianna, and her daddy. So hiking, hiking, and camping was, has always been a huge part of my life. Um, at that house in paradise then, uh, my sister and her new husband, <laughs> uh, we are all together playing cards. Uh, my mom and her new husband and Bob and his brother and me. We had so, so much fun. So much fun. Playing cards and hanging out together. Playing games. It was... It was a magical time in paradise. This was my folks' house. And I just, you know, I had to include this to show you what a fairyland it was in paradise, in the trees. It was a sweet, sweet time of reunion where the whole family, most of the family, was living in the same town. It was very, very nice. And in the house of my mom's, my kids, as teenagers, are all coloring together. <laughs> I thought that was so cute. Okay, so, um, this is not really a reunion, but there was a whole group of us, I guess, maybe, um, I don't remember the occasion. But a lot of family here together in this picture. Abigail's 14. Brianna's got to be like 16, 17. Catherine, Jacob, everyone's getting older. Sugar Bear's still there. Cousin Aaron. Now at this point, this is where I have met Jerry. My husband is standing next to me, but Jerry has become a fast family friend and uh, Christine and his and her husband anyway, good times, good times but Jerry has entered into our lives and he, we had met at church and uh, we had sung songs together and he was having a difficult time with his marriage so he's kind of taken refuge at our home at the time. So, um, uh, Catherine has her first baby. This is me, however, holding uh, my firstborn, my very first uh, grandchild, firstborn grandchild, Elizabeth. So, that was a great occasion. And here's a picture of Catherine with Elizabeth that I thought was just magical and gorgeous. And I thought, a Catherine does look a lot like me in this picture, but it is not me. Catherine is beautiful. All of my girls are beautiful. But Elizabeth is so cute. So cute. So I've got two. Um, let's see. And my, my daughter, Catherine, did get married. And she, because we had lived in Butte, um, she had met somebody, and as soon as she graduated from high school, went back to Butte, got married, and had a baby. And that's a whole other story. That's her life, not mine. <laughs> uh, but it was a big deal in my life to meet my first grandchild. And this is when she's older. I'm up in Montana visiting, and I have gotten some acrylic nails and Elizabeth is just fascinated with them so she takes the file out and starts trying to file my nails 
Because uh, I am good friends still with my second husband, I will not go into detail as to why our marriage dissolved, um, but it did, and it was sad, very sad to me. I did, I, uh, but after we divorced, which was at my Uh, request. I kind of uh, got just a wee bit wild with my freedom, and uh, but I met a wonderful girlfriend who t talked me into doing clamor shots. <laughs> like, okay, that's me trying <laughs> to be glamorous. Got the nails and everything, and I got a job at, at a, what do you call them? Like a convenience station. After so many years of not working, um, which was how I could afford to get acrylic nails, <laughs> but anyway, so that was one of the other little shots that they took. We paid a tiny bit of money to have the glamour shots taken, and while I was um, a divorced. Uh, still living in paradise with my family. My mom had a reunion. She got together the family. Uh, I don't have a picture of all of us together, but this was my. These were my siblings, uh, and were at my mom's house. Uh, but at this time, then I have a boyfriend, and um, his name was David. And, um, that relationship did not last long. Uh, it was probably, you know, knee-jerk reaction to divorce and that kind of thing, but, um, there's my kids, Abby, me, Jacob, Catherine, and she's got her little baby, Elizabeth, with her. Oops. Oopsies. Okay, so, then crazy woman that I am, um, still being, still being very much in love with my second husband, Bob Nelson. I remarried him, and, uh, we just, uh, did not, we couldn't keep apart. <laughs> it's, uh, so in spite of the troubles, we remarried, and this is at his new house in, uh, Paradise. And my mom and I are having a 4th of July celebration at my new house with Bob. I think um, our first part of our marriage lasted like, let's see, 89 to 96. I know, no, that isn't right. 89 to 99. I think we were married almost nine years, I think, or right around nine years before I divorced him and then we remarried. 
uh, but I'm still having my little fling uh, of being single here. Uh, yep, my pages got out of order. Because see, that should have been after. Yeah, so I discovered karaoke. <laughs> and there I am singing at the local smokehouse. Um, yeah, the, those were those were good times too, if just a little wild. And here's where I'm remarried. Okay, I also got that out of order just a bit. All right, and this time then we are back together, still living in paradise. And Brianna had been going to uh, college, and she graduated. So we went up there to Reading uh, for her graduation. Bob, Brianna, me. Okay, then. Um, while we were still in California, we took a trip up Highway 1 all the way along the coast from, oh, I think we were, like if you were in Paradise and you went directly west, um, you'd be somewhere near Monterey, not quite that far south, but Highway run, 1 runs the whole length of the ocean in California. And so we took our bikes, and this is when we started riding bikes in earnest, and I learned how to do some serious trekking. Uh, that was really fun. Uh, the thing about Bob and I is that we were best friends, and also had hell together. It was, uh, I, I'm sure many of you could relate. Um, love you, hate you. <laughs> this is, um, we finally did move back to, let's see, my folks moved to uh, the Bitterroot Valley in Montana from Paradise, and I was just like, oh, mama, oh my gosh, I miss you so much. I can't live without you. And, um, so we moved to the Bitterroot Valley, and this was the house that we got. It was a really cute Cape Cod home. Yeah. So that was in Corvallis. That was actually in Corvallis. Corvallis, Montana. And that's in the Bitterroot Valley. So that's in our house, um. Uh, I don't remember if that's Shere Khan or not, but my cats were very drapey. <laughs> it's draped over my shoulders. Um, but what did happen is that um, after Brianna had graduated and we moved back to Montana, we took her cat Shere Khan with us because she was too single. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know college kids can't really care as well for animals, so we took her cat, and he ended up contracting feline leukemia, and died, and I cried two weeks, for two weeks straight, it was just the most worst, and I had her, <laughs> I had him cremated, and I still have his ashes, um, but that, so that could be Shere Khan, or it could be the cat that I ended up getting to replace him. Didn't think I ever would, but we went to somebody's house who had kittens, and uh, we named him Cody, but that cat chose me. I, I wasn't even interested in getting another cat. That's what happened. Um, my husband got into real, realty, and he became a realtor, and we were at a client's house, and they had kittens, and I sat down with the kittens, and one cat climbed up on my lap. And I was like, oh no, oh no, oh no, too late. I'm taking this cat home with me. We named him Cody. So that could be Cody or it could be Shere Khan. I, my timeline gets so mixed up. Okay, in Butte, Montana, not Butte, um, in the Bitterroot Valley, there's a 
a place called Daily Mansion, and just outside of that, in uh, they have a very traditional. Well, there was a lot of deciduous and maple type trees in the Bitterroot Valley, but especially in this area. So we went there, and I was just fascinated by the brilliant colors of the leaves. So he got he caught me examining and collecting a few of the fall leaves. And this is at our house with uh, our grandchild Elizabeth. Um, we were raking and she got in there covered up with the leaves. Um, okay, by now it's Christmas time and Elizabeth is playing with her Santa doll. We're still in this house, in the Cape Cod house. And I just had to show you this because um, Bob Nelson was very um, cooperative with me. Whatever I wanted to do for Christmas, he was all in. He's doing a puzzle, eating cookies. There's the kitty draped on the chair. Like I said, I can't remember just by looking because I, I think part of the reason why I can't tell the difference is because the cat named Cody that replaced Shere Khan was so much like him, so much like him. So I cannot tell which cat that was. Okay, so while we're in the Bitterroot Valley, I am visiting my mom at her beautiful house, and Elizabeth and I are swinging on the swings that she had in the backyard. She had a gorgeous yard. And of course, we're back in Montana again, so we're going to, I believe that's Glacier National Park. And that's me on the hillside. I got so many wonderful pictures. My husband bought me a very nice camera. So I was able to capture some really good uh, wildlife. And this is a ground, not a groundhog, it's a ground squirrel. Ground squirrel, I believe. Or, gosh, there's another name. This is um, the mountain goat. Oh, there's so many mountain goat. Um, incredible to see how they could climb on cliffs and stuff, and they did. In the Bitter Valley, then, uh, we, we used to take walks out in the snow, 20 degree weather, but I found this old truck I took covered in snow. So gracious, so didn't belong to anybody as far as we knew. It wasn't on any public property. I mean, it was on public property. Me and Elizabeth in the Yellowstone River, or is it Yellowstone Lake? We took a trip to Yellowstone. Okay, about this time in Corvallis, uh, I have decided to open up a country store. And so Bob and I bought this 120-year-old building, the oldest building in Corvallis, Montana. And then eventually we, it was such a success that we opened up, we bought the house behind it and it was named, and you, I'm sure you can't see that, but I have another video on my channel that tells you all about how we did the gift shop, but it was a great success. And at that time, yeah, Nelson's Country Store, that's what I was doing. And I could just give you a brief visual of the front room. We had the, um, the original owner, uh, it used to be a barber shop when this building was first put up, and so the, the child of the original owner, um, came and visited our store, and he gave us some memorabilia. He loved what we did to it, turning it into a, a rustic wooden place. Every room of both buildings was filled with a different thematic element. And that was woodland, and this was, guess what, chickens. Chicken and straw. I brought the outdoors into the indoors, too. I don't know why. And this picture of uh, my daughter Abigail and I, both stores, uh, the one I had in Butte years earlier, and this one as well. Uh, 
she worked with me. She loved and was fascinated with having your own business and therefore she did at one point open up her own business, a 1960s boutique. Um, I don't know if you can see that squirrel hiding in the tree. But what I liked about the Bitterroot Valley is that it was less piney and less cold. Uh, in the Bitterroot Valley is considered what uh, the banana belt of Montana because it's the warmest area with the least amount of snow in Montana, I believe. But they just had, it, there was so much deciduous, colorful growth there. And yet, it had gorgeous, gorgeous um, big trees as well. So that was my yard. Uh, because we ended up moving to Victor, which was just 10 minutes down the road from uh, Corvallis. I still had the gift shop, but we just, you know, we found a, a home that had a wildlife reserve behind it. <clears throat> and so we were able to take hikes and get and see wonderful things like this. That was where I first became acquainted with the sound of the call of a pheasant. I've never heard pheasant before. So, um, we got another cat to have fun with Cody. Um, and this cat was so brave that it jumped up on this stump, even though there were a bunch of wild turkeys around. I think there was probably about seven, eight turkeys in the yard at the same time, just right in our backyard behind our back door. We didn't feed them, they just came. Um, but she thought she'd try, he thought he'd try, this Todd, Todd and Cody, take them on. This was just a really nice picture I got of um, Mammoth Hot Springs. Many, many pictures are taken of Mammoth Hot Springs, but I fell in love with this particular view. Um, this photograph does not do it justice. Um, this is Cody, for sure. This is Cody. He's got that fat face. He, he was so much like Shere Khan, but he was just a little chunkier. A little less active and more all about being on, on me. <laughs> me and Cody. Okay, we had Thanksgiving here at that house. That house that we bought in Victor was very, um, very rustic. Uh, sort of a faux cabin, but still super, super warm. But that's Catherine and me getting uh, Thanksgiving dinner ready. This is the same house in Victor and my mama. My mom and John, her husband, we used to play cards around this table all the time. They were our best friends in the Bitterroot Valley. Christine came to see us. Jacob, my son's uh, wife, sh they got married. Um, I'm out of order in my timeline, but you'll see. Uh, I'll show you when they got married. This is Abigail. She came to see us, too. I don't... I think she was living in Butte at the time, running her own gift shop. And then this, uh, this was towards the end of the life of my gift shop, and I had this gal, she was from Germany, and her husband, uh, I'm not going to name names, you can't see very clearly what that is, but they came to our house for Thanksgiving dinner one year. She was working for me at my shop, I think I said, but she was a native German, her and her husband, and... I remember after this meal was over, she said, My goodness, you all are so effusive and talkative and outgoing and jovial. I mean, she had so many different terms for how, uh, she goes, you guys are just so emotional. <laughs> I was just like, is that a bad thing? She goes, it's just not like that in Germany. We do not talk so much about our feelings or our thoughts.
thoughts or emotions. And I said, is that a bad thing? And she goes, oh, no, it's wonderful. But she wasn't used to it. So it was a, quite an eye-opener for her to be around our boisterous family. And that's at that property that I was telling you about in Victor with the nature reserve behind it. Um, it's Christmas, and every once in a while we get what you call hoar frost, H-O-A-R, hoar frost. And that is where mist settles in and on everything and then freezes. It was so beautiful. And then it snowed as well. Oh, man. Beautiful Christmas that year. And um, uh, Todd and Cody under the Christmas tree with the train. A very uh, fuzzy picture, but perhaps you can capture the mood. I loved having a toy train around the Christmas tree. And I would have done it again this year, but um, I just couldn't bring ourselves to spend the money. Okay, so at this point, um, we're very close to hanging it up with our marriage again. We tried so hard. We stayed together another five years, I believe, just eking it out. We loved one another very much and had so much history, but it was no longer tolerable. Um, and I just really cannot tell you why, um, because I wouldn't do anything in the world to hurt that man. Um, but at that point then I went up to visit my daughter in, um, by now she's living in Billings and I came to see her. Um, I think I had already divorced um, Bob and gone back to California because I see I have uh, California plates. And uh, I was getting ready to be single again and just, I, I had to, had to, I had to. <laughs> I can't say any more than that. Um, my son and his new wife, um, at the time that I was divorcing, then he was getting married and it was a very tragic thing for them to be married on, under those, um, the timing was just sad. But he got married anyway, and Bob and I went to the wedding. It was beautiful, and it was fun, and uh, Bob Nelson and I are very, very good friends still, and we went to that wedding together. But now I'm going, yes, I have got to enjoy my life in a different way, and, um, my sisters and I were all living in paradise again. And I was having the time of my life uh, being with my sisters. My mom and my stepdad were still back in Montana, but I went back and lived with my sister. And here's a day we were at the lake, Oroville Lake, and she had a, a friend she was trying to fix me up with somebody and we did have a good day but uh, there he is we found a mud pot with clay and uh, <laughs> all three of us were covered from head to toe with mud by the time we were done with that day it was fun I missed Bob very much um, but I was healing up from my own wounds uh, from things that had happened between us, which will be not named, but here I am enjoying a time with my other sister, Linda. Paradise was just a gorgeous place that continued to call my name in spite of um, my love for Montana and my love for my mom. She was still back in Montana, but Paradise was just that, 
paradise and I loved being there. Like I said, it's burnt it burned down now. And I believe that this place in, in Oroville called Table Mountain, um, with the beautiful poppies and lupin, um, this was very typical of all of California. This is basically what rural California looked like. Um, but in this particular place, I'm in Northern California with a friend hiking around Table Mountain. Here I am um, at the smokehouse karaoke bar. We went there quite frequently and me and my sister, uh, I'll show you a picture of that. We were called what, we, what you call the karaoke queens because we both sing pretty decently. Uh, we would do a lot of duets together and this was just another friend, but this was outside the smokehouse. Very good times, very good times. Um, I did end up with a boyfriend during that time, um, and in fact, the first time that I kind of got wild and after my first divorce with Bob, I ended up um, in that relationship with David, and oddly, him and this guy that I also dated in the second time around of my divorce, uh, they both ended up dying. I was just like, what? He got in a car accident years later. Uh, his name was John. Uh, crazy about him. I was crazy about him. Uh, but I couldn't stay with him either. Um, so years later, uh, I found out that he had been in an accident. A drunk or drugged up driver hit him and he was killed instantly and David, the other guy I dated he died from pancreatic cancer okay too young they're just too young it just was shocking actually this is um, a time when I'm actually living in paradise and we find out that my mom has a very severe case of tachycardia and we all got together the family uh, before she went into the surgery which was very very scary for us all and we were very very worried so the whole family got together and comforted her before she went in to surgery. Um, this was in, I believe we're in Redding, California, where she was getting her surgery. Me and my brother, uh, I'm singing. I'm holding a hymnal in my lap because I believe the song that we chose is from that. Bob is there. My brother David plays the violin and so we did a duet. It was that was a really amazing time. Um, brought the family together quite a bit. And here, uh, my sister is hugging her and feeling not sure that she's ever going to see her alive again. So it was quite a moment. We were all tearful and frightened. Um, but she did not die. Not yet. Tachycardia did uh, end up uh, being her demise towards the end, but she hung in there for a great deal longer and So here we are in Reading after the fact and everybody's feeling much happier And you note that I'm still friends with Bob Nelson and he's got his arm around Christine my sister and I while we're there Oh, we went to some parks and places all together in Reading um, we're uh, still at the park and a few of us just threw ourselves together here <laughs> for a picture. Um, my sister Linda has, throughout the years, actually she had her baby in Butte, Montana when we lived there the first time. And uh, that was quite an experience. See, the thing is, I can't. Too many things have happened in my life. I'm 60, so 
I'll be lucky to get through and get most of the highlights, but it was a privilege to have my sister live with us at the time that she had her baby. Um, okay, so at this time, then after that surgery of my mom's and this, uh, I have gotten a call from Jerry, who was good friends with our family all those years ago, and he, when he found out that I was divorced, he said, I have always loved you. So we got married. <laughs> there was quite a rigmarole getting to that point once he, we were reunited emotionally. Um, uh, but I eventually did move to Nashville and married him. And this was our first house. We got married. You can see that this is brick. It's this house that we got married in front of. His daughter and her husband lived there at the time, so you can't really see it. It'd just take too long to show you all these photographs, but he was in the background, and he officiated the wedding. Um, so, yeah, I married my friend. This is my fourth time being married, third husband, Washington Street, uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Because uh, Jerry was not a wealthy man, he had what he had to provide for me and did it very well, but I did need to go to work, and so I got a job at Cracker Barrel. I had many different jobs. I worked at Cracker Barrel, I was a caregiver, I tried so many things. <laughs> Just like, oh my god, I am not a worker. I. I, you have to do what you have to do, but I was miserable working a job because I'm an artist and it's not my thing. It was our first Christmas, I believe, or our second Christmas at that home. And it was very quiet, peaceful. We tried to give gifts to one another the first year and uh, it just was so disheartening uh, with us for me not having a family that, um, after this year, we never did gift exchange again, um, and we're not sad about it. We, it was a good choice, and I'm glad that we don't exchange gifts. I love Christmas, and he's getting to enjoy it as well, but, okay, so this is the occasion of my second grandchild being born. Um, my second grandchild was born while I was in Nashville with Jerry. Um, Deborah is the name of my son Jacob's wife, and she had her firstborn, which uh, I will not say her name because they would like to keep their children off of social media. Um, but there's me holding her and there was too much cleavage showing so I had to put a smiley face there and blur it out a little bit. <laughs> but this is, oh god, I don't know what year that is. It's, I don't know. Never mind the years. This is just things. Okay, so wonderful time. I got to be there for Catherine's first child and Jacob's first child. Uh, all my grandchildren were born while I was not with them. Um, so I, two grandchildren, three grandchildren are all that I've been able to be present for the birth of out of seven, because I've had seven grandchildren since I moved to Tennessee. No, six. The first one was born while I was in California. Okay, it doesn't matter. All right, so first, lovely, wonderful, oh God, beautiful. All of my grandchildren are gorgeous. Okay, but here's my life in Nashville. And I, when I first married Jerry, he had these two beautiful, 
twi a brother siblings, uh, which he named Duke and Ellington. This is Duke and that's Ellington. Gorgeous furry black cats. Okay, so that was all there, and there was no little kitten when we first got married. And then what happened is <laughs> our cats were stolen by a neighbor who thought that we were being irresponsible raising our cats near the railroad tracks. She just absolutely believed the cats should be raised indoors and took it upon herself to steal our cats. She didn't know for sure that they were ours, but she knew that they lived around and decided that she was going to raise them in her house with all her other cats she had. I mean, she could have had 50 or 100, I don't know, she was a classic, typical cat lady to the point that she would steal somebody else's cats. I was so attached to these guys that it just was murder on my heart. And I kept thinking that I I was tortured by thinking I hear, I could hear meowing and crying and it was, to oh God, I can't even explain. So then, while they were gone, and we had no clue where they were. I think it had been about um, a month, I guess, when we realized they were not coming back. Then Jerry said, go out and get yourself a kitten. So I got, since these were Duke and Ellington, and they were gone, we decided to keep the tradition of the names being uh, of black artists. Afro-American artist, I don't know how you prefer it to be said, but we named her Billie Holiday. And she had this beautiful marking on her. She was the sweetest cat. Um, so then, um, let's move on to the next picture just so we can have something different to tell. look at while I'm telling you the story of how um, we call her crazy cat lady. Um, came along and... I was sitting out on the rail tr railroad tracks one day and she um, decided to return the cats to me. Of course I was furious but I was holding it in and I didn't to express my anger. But So then all of a sudden we had three cats living in the house and um, they were, they got along really good but Duke was still just having a hard time adjusting to being in you know, displaced again in, into another home. Um, Duke ran away, and we never saw him again. So, these two guys, like, just they just loved each other, and they would get into all kinds of mischief. They were indoor-outdoor cats, and fortunately, the crazy cat lady did not any longer um, consider us irresponsible to have indoor-outdoor cats. Um, so, <laughs> Billy was quite the hunter, and I just had to show you that she actually caught a cardinal, and boy, oh boy, we were, I mean, we know that that's what cats do, but every time they catch a cat, we rescue the bird. That's a thing, mistake that they make if they want to keep it, is they shouldn't come and show off their, their catch to us, because we're going to do everything we can to get it away from them after we tell them, good girl, good boy, you did good, now let me have that <laughs> creature because I don't want you to kill him. Um, so while we were um, first married, um, my son Jacob and his wife and uh, firstborn came out to visit us and we took them to, looks like the Sugar Shack. It was a classic meet and three, a restaurant. They had never been to anything like that before. So that was fun. That so was the first a family member that actually came out to see us. So uh, Jerry and I, at some point every year, he tried to go back and visit his daughters in California and his brother. So we took a trip out to the coast. And there he is on, uh, can't remember, is it Fisherman's Wharf? And we also went to uh, Yosemite National Park, and I believe that's the Half Dome. Uh, 
we went to um, Tahoe, which is Lake Tahoe is where Jerry grew up with his family. And so we're out on the top of the hill. Uh, and that's Lake Tahoe. So we did a lot of um, traveling around California just seeing uh, his immediate family. Mine were living in Montana, so we didn't... Okay, here we are in front of a giant redwood in Yosemite. Or were we in the redwood forest? I cannot remember. It's just that we did these things. Um, here we are uh, in another... We're visiting his cousin, Colfax, uh, Northern California. Just gorgeous, gorgeous places in California and Montana, of course, but you can tell I'm a nature baby. I just gotta get out in the woods. This my husband hiking the rocks that you saw me on top of. This is the ridge that goes over to Lake Tahoe from where he used to live. We went and saw his old house. We went to old Virginia City. This is uh, me in front of one of the old mine shafts or something like that. It's like a mining town. Virginia City is a mining town. And I had him pose in the same spot. Totally, totally in love with this man. We have been married longer than I've been married at any stretch to anybody. Um, this is permanent. This is, this is the relationship of my life. We went and visited his brother. His brother owns a shop out in Nevada. And that's his, uh, his brother's wife. Uh, I, I think it's okay. He said I could just picture them, so I think it's okay to say it's Mike. Mike and Meredith. And they're new, newborn. Um, yeah, and Jerry, we're, we had fun at a at a restaurant that was in. It's a gambling town, you know. So there's a lot. You can get a pretty good deal on food out there in those gambling towns. I don't think you can see this very well, but we went out to another pier or a wharf or something, so we're about to go get dinner at the, maybe get a bowl of clam chowder or something. The California coast is just incredible. And Jerry and I probably can't see this, but there's bicycle shadows over here. We started to do some bike riding since he knew that I was pretty crazy about bike riding and getting out into the wilderness and this is in Ashland City in particular uh, in Tennessee okay so by this time I am sick to death of trying to find a job that I would be happy at I want to help support our family and our life just he and I um, so I started quit my job at Cracker Barrel. No, I didn't quit. I got fired. Somebody sabotaged my drawer purposefully. Um, don't know why that this girl just hated me for no un no clear reason. I don't know why, but I got fired. Um, and um, I started what you call a Craigslist business. And this room is full of items and things that I would collect from gift shops. i not gift shops, garage sales. Garage sales, I go to garage sales and collect all kinds of really neat stuff that I can resell on Craigslist secondhand. There wasn't a thing that I bought that didn't sell. Everything sold. And I did, I started bringing in just a decent little amount of uh, money to help uh, our income and that was fun uh, I loved it because people come to my house <laughs> and I'd meet all kinds of people this is uh, country magazine and the reason I'm showing you this is because at some point 
I was subscribed to, to this magazine, loved it, missing it, because I'm here in Tennessee, and uh, we were living in the city, so um, I, uh, I was subscribed to this to remind me. Anyway, they said that you could get a prize or win some cash or whatever if you entered in your photographs. And so I did. I entered in one of my photographs and I took place and they sent me a little triangle dinner bell. I was like, okay, no cash, but hey, I made it into the magazine. And this is the photograph. This is the photograph of a squirrel in a pine tree. So yeah, I made it into Country Magazine. I, it will live on forever. That was momentous for me. Um, Catherine, she is having her second grandchild, my second grandchild, her second born. But her firstborn, see, she had her firstborn, Elizabeth, when she was 19, kind of following the same pattern as me. <laughs> but I had all my children in a row, bam, bam, bam. Uh, whereas Catherine waited, what is she, like about seven, to have her next child. And she is married to somebody else at this point. Apparently, oh, divorce is so much more prevalent today for good reason. And also for bad, but... Um, so this is, this is my, um, daughter-in-law, Deborah, and Jacob, my son. We were all visiting Catherine, uh, at, after Race was born, and so I'm holding Race, uh, Catherine's second-born child, and we're all just together, you know, Catherine's house. Just good times. But I did that. I, uh, I had to travel to Billings, and Jerry did not come with me uh, when Race was born. But I thought this was so funny. Look at what he's doing with his finger. So, <laughs> so Race is born, and this is his first take on life. <laughs> a total accident, I know. That's so funny. So, um, I take another trip to, let's see, uh, we were back home for a while after Race was born, and I think it might be, let me see, a couple, yeah, because there's Elizabeth there, and there's Elizabeth there, she's maybe a year older, I don't know. My mother was starting to get Alzheimer's and or was it just dementia? I knew that I had to get back one more time because her um, issues with tachycardia and yeah so I said Jerry you've got to come to Montana and re-meet my mother after so many years because she needs to know that I'm going to be okay after she dies. <sighs> Excuse me, I had to take a break because I was crying. So, here's a portrait of my father on the wall <laughs> in my brother's house. His brother, David. And all four siblings, minus my other sister, Linda, were there sitting with my mom underneath my dad's portrait, who had already passed away long ago. And it was just very, um, such a statement for, the, for us to be together. And it was my last time to see my mother. Excuse me again for a second. Uh, 
this is real hard for me. <laughs> Um, so we had the four, no, three, four generations here. Oh, my mother had me, and I had Catherine, and Catherine had Elizabeth. I was hoping for my mom to stay alive long enough for there to be a fifth generation. <laughs> but there's us girls. <clears throat> Yes, Shirley, Rebecca, Catherine, Elizabeth. Yes, so this is Jerry getting reacquainted with my family. Um, my sister Linda was there that day. I don't know why she wasn't in that other picture, but there's my mom um, idolizing her son. <laughs> but we're playing cards and just having good family tradition again. Um, and my mama was not quite coherent enough to play the cards with us like usual, but Jerry was very nervous, um, really getting introduced to the family, but he did it. It was okay. And everybody loved him. Okay, so me and my mom and her husband, um, at this point, uh, my stepfather was missing an arm. He had, uh, years and years and years ago, he had had uh, aviary flu or something like that where he was in, uh, poisoned by a toxic bird waste or something that if you get into your system, that's why you gotta... Anyway, so they fought for his arm for many, many, many years, but it was eventually cut off up to the elbow. And he was, he and my mom endured that together. And now it's his turn to be there for my mom as she is starting to deteriorate very quickly. But she was coherent enough really to um, tell me how glad that she was that I was with Jerry and she had a very good feeling <laughs> about him. So she was able to let go of me knowing that I was going to be okay. Uh, then, uh, she had not passed away yet. Um, when Jerry and I, we had to go back to um, Nashville. Uh, then we decided to move to Portland, Tennessee. And this is the house that I'm in right now. And, um, it was in the first year that I moved here that my mom did finally pass away and I got to speak with her on the phone one last time and uh, I told her uh, she was kind of in a coma I think at that point and somewhat of one and she wasn't speaking and my mom put the phone to her ear and I said mama remember how I used to always say that I wanted to be just like you and I said, well, I know that you can't answer, but I wanted to just tell you that I still want to be just like you, and I'm proud to be. Christine told me as she was the one holding the phone that her eyes flew open. She didn't smile or anything, but she was cognizant for that moment, listening to what I said, and I was able to say goodbye to my mama. And yeah, I was living at this home and just enjoying a new life. And gosh, there was a lot of loss and tragedy that happened uh, in the next couple of years because um, my cat that I had brought, Duke and Ellington, Duke had run away and Ellington came with me and he's a black cat, so he got ran over by a car. So then I lost him. <laughs> this is crazy. I eventually got a job on the bus, and this is the reason this picture I'm showing is you're not allowed to take pictures on the bus. But some kid had a cell phone and took a picture of me trying to take a picture of them. And then I found out you're not allowed to actually keep pictures of the kids or anything on the bus. So this was a rare... Um, photograph and I'd love to show you my kids 
because I had them for five years uh, working on the bus as a bus attendant for special needs children, and they were wonderful until the last year, and I had to retire, and some of you may know the story about that, but I did retire from the bus this last summer. This is another trip that I took back to uh, Conrad, Montana to visit my sister, and there's Elizabeth again, and another, someone else's uh, grandchild, which will remain unnamed because I don't want to spoil anyone's privacy, but we just had a blast um, while I could. I was going to menopause big time there, so I was very moody, but still active. I think I'm about 58 here, I think. I don't know. And that was on that same trip, I believe, and this is a gathering of my daughter, my niece, and my granddaughter, and I, on that trip. What was, what were we there for? I think I just went there to visit, um, I was probably fighting with Jerry. <laughs> uh, that's a good time to go visit family. So, uh, here is a picture of Etta. We had Billy still, but we got two more cats, Etta and Ellington, no, El Allison. Uh, her brother, her sibling got ran over by a car, black cats, I don't know, the cars just can't see them. So, I lost two cats in within a year's time after my mom died. I was a wreck. I was an emotional wreck. But we still managed to have magical moments. Jerry and I took me a long time to get over not being with family, but we have managed. And one of the things that we did for fun was raise chickens. And at this point, <laughs> She was our last chicken. That was Henny Penny. It's Christmas, and she's, we let her in the house. <laughs> and uh, here she is. We had a whole pen with all four of the chickens in there, but Henny Penny was my prettiest one. Uh, I don't remember if this is Henny Penny or not. I don't think it is, but everyone, well, maybe it is. But they... Um, they would get, you know, close to us. They they weren't completely friendly, not like the ones you see on videos where they come running. But I had so much fun, and they're in some of my videos. You've probably seen them here and there. But you don't anymore because they're all dead by now. Um, this was a, a momentous occasion for me because after years and years and years, probably 25 years or more, 30 years, I finally got a perm again. I was just like, hey, oh, I wish perms wouldn't grow out and that my hair would stay like that forever because I loved it. And this is somewhere into where um, I have started my channel, but I don't, I haven't mentioned that yet. At some point then, um, I am babysitting my daughter's dog. That's why the dog has shown up in some of my earlier videos. This was Jackson. Jackson Black. He's the cutest, sweetest little dog, but we had him for a year, I guess. Finally brought him back to Abigail, and shortly after that, Jackson died from diabetes. But it was wonderful to have him at our house for a while. So, it's out of order, but somewhere along the line, I started my channel. And that happened just because I discovered ASMR accidentally, and I was like, oh my gosh, I can make these sounds, but I want to make them like I want. And when I saw that somebody was actually going to start looking at my channel 
I went ahead and had business cards made because I thought hmm, maybe I could get people around town to, you know, look at my channel and send it, whatever, you know, it's just good to have a business card, so I called it YouTube Sound Nostalgia because that's what I was focusing on was the sounds that come from our past. Okay, so says, the back of the card says relaxing sounds to soothe your soul and lull you to sleep. <laughs> yeah, so that was fun too. And then COVID hit and we were in the pandemic and I was PO'd. I was so angry. And I thought if I have to wear a mask and you can no longer see my face, then you're not going to see my eyes either. And I'm going to keep a smile on my face anyway. <laughs> Trying to make the best of a bad situation. So that was me being goofy. But I actually did go out that way from time to time. <laughs> People did look at me like I was strange because I guess I am strange a little bit. Okay. So then at some point, Catherine and her kids, all, all three of them, no, all two of them, she brought her two littles with her and we did a video together. So that was kind of a momentous occasion to have a uh, family come and visit me. Although Linda and Abigail have been to my house a few times, uh, but for Catherine to come all the way from Billings, Montana and bring her kids and actually make a video with me it was a pretty memorable event. And then of course we're coming up to current times and this is Avery. Avery and Brianna moved uh, in with me and Avery needed to start school so she went to the doctors and was getting ready to start school. So. That's been a very momentous occasion in our lives to have Avery and Brianna living with us. And then um, I got called away to Billings, Montana to visit Catherine. So that was another momentous occasion for me. Uh, this is her youngest uh, grand uh, daughter, my grandchild, Race Elizabeth. Catherine and I. That was a nice trip. And then we're down to the end here. And this was just this Christmas. And Brianna and Avery are making Christmas cupcakes. We did some baking, but I couldn't get any of it into a video because I just couldn't put that kind of responsibility onto the moments that we were having as a family. So, yeah, that's bringing you up to date, everybody. And I know this was long. I appreciate that you have um, stayed with me and been interested in my long life. And I will probably never do a video like this again. <laughs> but that's it. And I hope that the requester is happy with what I have provided. Yes. So, I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.